Hello students, we are in with the last part of this particular topic. Hope you enjoyed whatever we discussed. In this part, we are going to understand about the apparent weight. What does an apparent weight stand for? When an object is under motion in a non-inertial system, obviously its weight is going to change depending upon how much is the net force with which that non-inertial frame is moving. In case that motion is taking place along the direction or it is moving in an opposite direction or in a perpendicular direction. Based on that, we are going to understand about the apparent weight. So stay tuned here. Now we'll be discussing about the point of apparent prop, apparent mass of any object or apparent weight of any person in an elevator. So what we have, we'll be discussing about a couple of cases. So if we consider a man of mass M who is standing on a weighing machine, let's say here in an elevator. If I say G represents the center of gravity, in that case, what is going to happen? We need to observe a couple of situations. First one, case one, when it is at rest. So when the mass is at rest or when the person is at rest, there are going to be a couple of forces. At the center of gravity, you will have a normal reaction from this, from this weighing machine and mg is going to be the weight acting. So these two are the forces that will be acting on this mass. Since this object is at the hole is at rest, so acceleration is going to be zero. And therefore, we'll say that the normal reaction R is going to be balancing the weight mg. The apparent weight in this case is going to be equal to the true weight. Going further, if we say that, if, if you say that the body is moving up with an acceleration A equals to 0, in this case as well, the value of R is going to be equals to mg. So if the value of R is equals to weight mg, so apparent weight is going to be equal to the true weight. Then, when the object is moving down with a constant velocity, so obviously the value of acceleration is going to be equal to 0. In this case as well, the value of R is equals to mg and the object is going to go down with the same value. So R is going to be equal to weight mg and apparent weight will be equal to true weight. Going further, if I say <coughs> that the mass is moving up with an uniform acceleration. So if it is moving with an uniform acceleration, we'll say that there is a pseudo force that will start acting in a downward direction. So what will we have? We can say that the net force is going to be R minus mg. If we know that is equal to m into a, so the normal reaction will come out to be m into a plus g. So apparent weight will be more than the true weight. In a similar manner, when the body is moving down with an uniform acceleration, so what will we get? We will say that this, in this case, the normal weight, the actual weight is going to be less or the apparent weight is going to be less than the actual weight. So apparent weight in this case is going to be less than the true weight. Final case, when the elevator is falling freely. When the elevator is falling freely, obviously the normal reaction in this case is going to be zero because its apparent weight is going to be cancelling the actual weight. So the value of normal reaction is going to be equal to zero. So the apparent weight will be equal to zero. So hopefully all of you understood whatever is to be discussed, whatever we discussed here in all these modules, any kind of thing any kind of doubt if you have, please come and discuss with us in our Ask Items forum. So you can post your doubts, you can raise your questions and we will be very happy, we will be very pleased to answer your doubts. Thank you. So well students, hope you understood that when a lift falls, why do you feel kind of weightless? So that is the case of an apparent weight. Hope you understood about this particular topic. Now to summarize as to what all we learned in this whole chapter of laws of motion. We started off with an introduction where we understood about the different types of forces. Then we went over and understood about the laws of inertia, what are the three different laws of inertia, which actually can be experienced by any person in a day-to-day -day life. Then we introduced the topic of the Newton's laws of motion, what basically are the three laws, what prompted Newton to explain the three laws of motion. That is the concept of the apple falling on his head. We bifurcated that further by introducing first the Newton's first law followed by the second law and the conservation of momentum and the third law of motion. So broadly speaking, this deals with the whole laws of motion. The laws of motion can be best understood if we discuss further about the equations of motion 
which is also going to be another topic in my series of lectures so please be stay tuned in and try to learn more with us by because we have our different topics in physics chemistry math and biology and with askiatins.com